Hello everyone, I am Sukanya Rana and welcome back to day 2 of uh, Street Daily Initiative, your daily dose of UPSC preparation. So, I hope uh, yesterday you were able to benefit both from the mains and the prelims question. So, uh, today's topic that were uh, given to you were related to uh, again polity and the topics were Council of Ministers at central and the state level cabinet committees and parliament. So again, these are very important topics and UPSC has been asking a lot of questions from these portion. So I hope you've done with your revisions and you have attempted both the prelims and mains questions. So let us look at your answers for mains question. So the first question of the day was uh, identify the major obstacles in the smooth functioning of parliamentary democracy in India. Now, this is a very important question. I mean, uh, every aspirant should understand what does the idea behind parliamentary democracy stands for. So, keywords here is number one, uh, major obstacles. Second is uh, your uh, parliamentary democracy in India. So, these are two major key terms which should be covered in your answers. So, again, I'll repeat, uh, if you've not written the answer, at least jot down a uh, basic structure of the answer in a copy or points that you would cover in this particular answer and then cross-check with the evaluation in terms of uh, introduction, body and conclusion, which will be provided in the next slide. So, what should be there in your introduction? See, it's a very direct question. So, let's keep our introduction pretty simple. Let us explain what does the term parliamentary democracy means. So, your introduction will include a small definition of this particular concept. Then, straight away what we are going to do is we are going to move to your body of the answer. Now, uh, a direct question in the body of uh, in the uh, in the body would deal with the idea of obstacles because that is directly asked in your question, right? Look at the question here. The major question, the basic question here is you have to talk about the major obstacles. So that is a very direct thing to understand to write in this particular answer. But at the same time, um, before you move on to the idea of obstacles, let us uh, look at uh, some portion where first we're going to draw. We we're going to talk about the significance of parliamentary democracy, right? So there are some key features. There are some. Uh, uh, key ideas with respect to parliamentary democracy which is very important and uh, let us draw a small diagram and highlight those points like uh, you can talk about the idea of responsibility you can talk about the idea of accountability uh, especially the executive who are account accountable to your legislature so all these ideas are very important with respect to parliamentary democracy and they hold a special place Right, so cover these ideas. Basically, this portion is telling us why parliamentary democracy is important. Right, so once you've done with that section, then you can tell me what all are obstacles with respect to parliamentary democracy in India. And again, you have to divide this particular portion into a lot of different subheadings because this obstacle portion is going to be a major part of your body. So, uh, you can talk about poverty here how poverty uh, can in, uh, disrupt the working of parliamentary democracy. Like if people are poor, if they are illiterate, then they cannot hold the legislature or the executive accountable. So those are issues. There's issues of casteism, communalism is a very big issue. Regionalism also uh, reduces the efficacy of the working of parliamentary democracy. Corruption, we can talk about crony corruption here as well. Then criminalization of politics get in some data uh, with respect to uh, how many uh, criminals are there in the current Lok Sabha. So that will add on to your uh, good set of examples in this particular body, right? So after you've done, we're dealing with a lot of obstacles that are there with respect to working of parliamentary democracy in India. Then obviously in our conclusion, we're going to talk about some measures through which we can strengthen the idea of parliamentary democracy how we can reduce the discretion, how we can reduce the issues that are there present with respect to parliamentary democracy. So again, subdivide your measures here. Talk from the angle of administration, how uh, parliamentary democracy can be reformed with the help of uh, some administrative reforms, legislative reforms, there are judicial reforms, 
social reforms again social reforms you can talk about the ideas of say poverty illiteracy casteism communalism what are the solutions to some of these ideas right and finally also talk about the role of citizen how citizen can strengthen the idea of parliamentary democracy and i think you can conclude your answer on this particular note right so i think this is a pretty much good structure which talks about each and every aspect that needs to be covered in this particular question and i hope at least some portion of uh, your answer does includes these points right uh, let's move on to the second question of the day and uh, the second question of the day is uh, on another topic which is cabinet committees so the question is that the essential purpose of cabinet committees is to relieve the cabinet of some burden of work discuss so uh, there is this term here discuss now discuss usually means is uh, you have to justify or you have to give a lot of statements in support of the statement that is preceding this particular term so what uh, the idea of question here is you have to give a lot of examples you have to give a lot of argument in favor of the particular statement which says how cabinet committee can help to reduce the burden of uh, your cabinet right so again key term here is uh, purpose of cabinet committees and uh, how it can reduce the burden of uh, cabinet so these are two basic ideas that you have to cover in your answers uh, again write answers and then check this answer so uh let's keep our introduction to be simple here since we're talking about the idea of cabinet committee let's start with defining what is cabinet committee now we all know that cabinet committee is an extra constitutional feature uh, it is not part of your constitution so uh, bring that element talk um, talk about a brief idea about these committees like you can talk about the origin of cabinet committees it is part of your transaction of business rules uh, 1961 and it is basically derived from article 77 so bring those ideas give me some examples of cabinet committee there are a couple of them right you can pick up any appointment economic affairs whatever you want to pick up give me some examples so this will give a good amount of definition which will tell me what these committees are and a brief uh, introduction to these particular committees right then second part see uh, the body uh, basically is going to talk about two things number one it's going to talk about how uh, positively the cabinet committees influences the work of cabinet like how it reduces its workload so this particular portion is going to talk about all the positive with respect to cabinet committees right and again if you want to reduce the generic portion in this particular uh, idea then do include examples like pick up a committee say for a uh, committee on economic affairs and talk about how it plays a key role in directing the investment into the country and uh, sanctioning uh, projects in the country also talk about how it take care of the agricultural crisis in india so uh, a lot of uh, important economic decisions that uh, are passed by cabinet are actually uh, gone through this particular committee and uh, the kind of research and uh, discussion that is required is done at this particular committee and then the final decision is taken at the cabinet level right, right. so uh, what you can do is again pick up committees and use them as example in this particular section so that will uh, reduce the generic nature of your answer then after you've covered with all the positive aspects add a small section why i am saying a small section because the question was basically on a positive note the question said discuss but in order to add another element let's let's write some small section where we're going to talk about some issues with these committees and uh, see some issues can be very uh, simple here like you can talk about how the meetings have not been regular you can talk about how junior ministers are not part of this particular cabinet committees also there are a lot of political considerations uh, so bring in this points and i think uh, make this section pretty small and you don't have to write too much in it and finally we have our conclusion now see uh, conclusion in this particular question writing way forward can be difficult and uh, we don't really have uh, a lot of different aspects say from second arc or uh, 
other reports if you do remember them then you can write them but if you do not have those points there's another angle to conclude your answer so what you can do here is you can talk about some recent development with respect to these bodies so you can talk about how uh, these bodies are so important that they were actually reconstituted in 2019 and two separate uh, uh, committees were set up one on investment and one on skill development so basically uh, this conclusion will show the linkage of your answer with current affairs and how um, significant that these particular committees are that they are evolving with respect to the need of a developing nation like the ideas of skill development and investment is something that the government is working upon a lot so yeah so talk about this angle and i think end your conclusion with this particular idea right uh, and i think uh, yeah so that's it we've covered the, uh, the two topics for your day two section and i hope uh, uh, these answers are helping you to understand how to approach your mains answer so stay tuned we'll cover the next two topics for tomorrow at the same time in the evening and till then take care and all the best subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update from civil state